In this video, I'm going to show you why and how sarcopenia has such a negative and unwanted effect on human health and how it's related to cancer, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and so on, and how most weight loss programs, they contribute to it and they strip you of your health and vitality. And why BIA testing can act as an early detector or screen for sarcopenia. How it can help clients finally get long lasting successful changes in body composition and why it's such a great clinical compass. It's fast, easy, non-invasive and a very low cost test. Less than about a dollar per test and it's very realistic and doable in clinical practice. So what is the loss of muscle? Loss of muscle is called sarcopenia. Out of the top 10 healthy biomarkers for healthy aging, muscle is the number one. It's the most vital. And the loss of muscle is called sarcopenia. It's an early marker of declining health and it increases the risk of certain diseases. And most importantly, it can be detected early and it represents a treatment for many declining health issues such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, osteoporosis, cancer, obesity, and so on. And the important point here was it can be used as a treatment for declining health. Improving muscle mass and muscle function can be described as a treatment. So again, the biomarkers of health Muscle mass is number one, strength is number two, basal metabolic rate is number three, and body fat percentage is number four. And these top four are called the fantastic four, and they're very closely related. Number five is your aerobic capacity, your ability to process and utilize oxygen. Number six is your ability to balance blood sugar. Seven is your cholesterol to HDL ratio and eight is your blood pressure, nine is your bone density, and 10, your ability to regulate body temperature. So biomarkers are the changes in the human body that represent a decline in function and aging. And on a positive note, they can also be markers that we're improving and we're slowing the aging process and we're regaining health and specifically vitality and wellness. And BIA testing measures three of the top four biomarkers. So why is muscle so important for weight loss? Muscle is the primary tissue which burns fat. It also sends a signal to the fat tissue to mobilize and utilize fat. It's directly related to the amount of calories we burn at rest and that we can consume. And muscle acts as a saving account or an energy reserve in a health crisis. Sarcopenia is related to almost all of the chronic illnesses and accelerated aging. It helps us prevent falls and protects our bones if we do fall. It gives our body shape and tone and muscle is sexy. In this important paper in the Journal for the American Medical Association a number of years ago, they stated sarcopenia is the backdrop against which the drama of disease is played out. And that a body depleted of protein because of aging is less able to withstand the protein catabolism, so the protein breakdown that comes with acute illness or inadequate protein intake. And that was taken from a paper entitled Sarcopenia understanding the dynamics of aging muscle. And so why is muscle so important? It plays an incredibly important role in preventing diseases like type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, and even Alzheimer's disease and so on. In this paper from May 2011 entitled 
quantification of lean tissue losses during cancer and HIV infections, AIDS. The authors stated the emergence of the concept of sarcopenic obesity in cancer patients, a condition associated with decreased survival, demonstrates the necessity to assess their body composition with easily available methods such as bioelectrical impedance. What a great endorsement for running BIA testing in clinical practice. So why is muscle so important? It's important for preventing and addressing sarcopenia and it helps get to the underlying cause of chronic illness, diseases, if you will, and accelerated aging. It slows the aging process. In this paper entitled, Sarcopenia Exacerbates Obesity, Associated Insulin Resistance and Dysglycemia. Findings from the National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey 3. Their conclusion, sarcopenia, independent of obesity, so muscle loss independent of whether or not we gain fat, is associated with adverse glucose metabolism and the association is strongest in individuals under 60 years of age. And this suggests that low muscle mass may be an early predictor of diabetes susceptibility. And BIA testing is great for screening for sarcopenia. And that may be related to diabetes susceptibility. In this paper, the authors concluded, we found that fat-free mass, so that's in this case your muscle, was lower and fat was higher in acutely ill and chronically ill patients than the control group. What they're really stating is that the people with low muscle and high fat tend to get sick more often in both acute or long-term health conditions. And again, from this paper, Sarcopenia, Understanding the Dynamics of Aging Muscle, an important quote is, the most important message is that sarcopenia exists in all older individuals. They go on to state, in the face of acute or chronic illness, maximizing muscle mass and protein stores through adequate nutritional support, aggressive physical therapy and exercise, so that's resistance training or lifting weights, it becomes all the more important if muscle function and the quality of life are to be preserved in the older population. And very interesting, this paper from Nutritional Metabolism and Cardiovascular Disease from 2008 entitled Sarcopenic Obesity, a new category of obesity in the elderly. They stated recent data suggests that peptides, these are molecules produced by the fat tissue, they may play an important role in the pathophysiology of sarcopenic obesity. And that identifying elderly subjects with sarcopenic obesity should be mandatory. In this paper entitled Clinical Detection of Sarcopenic Obesity by Bioelectrical Impedance Analysis. They stated the BIA may be clinically useful for demonstrating sarcopenic obesity in women at normal body mass indices. They also state additional studies should be run to figure out why this is happening. This paper was from 1996. Two important points. One, they measured a number of women and they found based on the body mass index scale, these women were quote unquote healthy and normal. However, when a BIA test was run on them, they found that these women had lost muscle and gained fat. So that's point one. Point two was, back in 1996, they were asking for more studies to figure out why this is going on. More current studies are expressing how this actually happens. For from the Journal of Clinical Oncology, from January 2011 entitled Associations of Insulin Resistance and Adiponectin with Mortality in Women with Breast Cancer. What they stated was overweight or obese breast cancer patients have a worse prognosis compared with normal weight patients. 
and this may be attributed to hyperinsulinemia. That's high blood insulin, and that's an early marker on the road to diabetes, and dysregulation of adipokine levels associated with overweight and obesity. So as we gain body fat, the body fat tissue doesn't just sit there and store calories, it produces at least 25 different compounds, half of which are pro-inflammatory compounds. And the greater our body fat levels, the greater the dysregulation. They also stated, to the best of their knowledge, this is the first demonstration of the association between low levels of adiponectin, and that's really important for blood sugar regulation, and increased breast cancer mortality in breast cancer survivors. So what they're really saying is, if women get breast cancer, and after treatment, if they gain body fat, their rate of survival falls. And again, this paper from 2004 stated that in early breast cancer patients receiving adjunctive chemotherapy, if they gain fat, the rate of survival falls. And again, something about the fat tissues producing compounds that are causing sarcopenia and disruption of physiology. This paper entitled, Obesity-Related Colon Cancer, Dietary Factors and Their Mechanisms of Anti-Cancer Action. One of their statements was, Obesity increases the risk for type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. For example, colon cancer. Another statement was, it is generally accepted that metabolic changes associated with being overweight or obese, particularly the midsection fat, that abdominal fat, and changes in the fat cell function contribute to the increase of colon cancer. So the mechanisms are starting to be worked out. They also state that part of these preventive strategies to help these people might be based upon dietary factors such as vitamins, minerals, such as selenium, fiber, phytochemical, and phenolic compounds. These are these phyto phytonutrients. These anti-cancer nutrients may counteract the molecular changes associated with obesity. This is great news because we have control of the foods we eat, and this may have a very significant impact on colon cancer and possibly even other cancers. In this paper entitled, Systemic Immune Mediators and Lifestyle Changes in the Prevention of Type 2 Diabetes, Results from the Finnish Diabetic Prevention Study from 2006. What they stated in this paper was that lifestyle intervention aimed at increasing physical activity, improving diet, and decreasing body weight reduced the incidence of type 2 diabetes in individuals who were overweight and had impaired glucose tolerance by 58%. I think there's a lot of people who are on the road to diabetes or even have type 2 diabetes who would be very interested in this information. By changing their diet, by moving more, by maybe adding some resistance training, by improving their diet, as the last paper said, by ha adding more phytonutrients, phytochemicals, and by losing a little bit of weight, they can make very significant and substantial changes in their function of blood sugar and glucose and reduce the road to diabetes. In this paper, Prevalence and Determinant Factors of Sarcopenia in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes the Korean Sarcopenic Obesity Study from Diabetes Care 2010. One of their conclusions, type 2 diabetes was associated with increased risk of sarcopenia. These characteristics may contribute to physical disability and metabolic disorders in older adults with diabetes. Are you starting to see the trend? Are you starting to see the pattern? So let's take this one step farther. In our society, there's a huge amount of obesity and it's on the rise. So many people are going and trying to lose weight. And what do most weight loss programs do? 
Many weight loss programs contribute to the loss of muscle, which promotes rebound fat gain once you resume a normal diet and contributes to yo-yo dieting. And think about it. Where is it that we burn most of our fat? In muscle tissue. If you lose your muscle, you lose your ability to burn fat. If you lose your muscle, the muscle sends signals to the fat tissue to mobilize the fat and utilize it. You lose that effect as well. This is the end of part one on BIA testing and sarcopenia. Please continue viewing part two now, the importance of BIA testing and sarcopenia.